Hey, what's up, party people? Ivan here with I'll Get My Tools. Today, we're going to install a smart ceiling fan. What's a smart ceiling fan? I'm going to tell you. Give me a second. So basically, it's got a transmitter within the housing. So you can have a switch on the wall along with a remote control, and both can control the ceiling fan, which is fantastic. The second thing is most houses are wired with 12-2 Romex. You got your hot, neutral, and the ground. Now, for a ceiling fan, if you have your switch on the wall, you want to have the light on a dimmer, and then you want to have your fan blades on different speeds. So you're going to require a 12-3 Romex. So you got to power to the light, power to the blades, your ground, and your neutral. Instead of having to rewire the whole system, this works on your old Romex wiring, which is fantastic. You don't have to run new wires, get new junction box, all of that. So these smart ceiling fans actually handle a few of your issues, and they're great. And lastly, whether you like them or not, they come with LED lights, which could be a good thing. We all know LED lasts way longer than CFL or incandescent bulbs. I honestly don't know how long. The salesman told me it'll last forever. I think he's lying to me. But in any case, if and when the LED burns out, you can just order another one. So he says, I don't know. All right, so I'm gonna walk you through the process. It's very similar to other ceiling fans. There's a few things that are different, obviously, because it being a smart ceiling fan. I got you, and do me a favor, like this video, send me a comment, and please subscribe to my channel. I do all kinds of house renovations, installs, product review, how-to, gardening, landscaping. I do all that kind of stuff, so subscribe. <laughs> All right, so let's go through the box real quick. It's always important to check the contents to make sure that everything's in there. All right, this is the new outlet I was telling you guys about. It's a smart outlet. You got your fan blades times three. The instruction manual. Use this, people. I never use instruction manuals and I always end up having problems. But that's it. Here is the mounting bracket. All right, that's gonna go up to the ceiling. This is a dummy light. I'm not gonna use that for my application, but some of these new fans do come with these covers, so in case you don't want an actual light fixture. All right, here's the actual motor and housing. Pretty heavy. And then you got your, this is an LED system, so the, the LED bulb and another mounting bracket for the LED bulb. And your actual glass, be very careful with this, put it somewhere safe until you're done. That's the housing. So this is the old ugly ceiling fan. If you have this in your house, I'm sorry, I do apologize. But we're upgrading this one, so I'm gonna show you quickly how to take down the old one. There's usually a nut that's holding in the glass. All right, hold the glass while you do this. You don't want to shatter this. And if I didn't mention already, turn off your electricity before you do this stuff. Come on, people. There's like an enclosure that holds the motor. There's usually a couple of screws. Just unscrew those. All right, that comes down. You got this. Now it's going to give you access to the inner workings of the ceiling fan. So the particular ceiling fan, you're gonna have to actually undo each paddle. It sucks, but that's how this one was installed. So I'm just gonna go through with my drill, unscrew all the paddle fans. That's gonna allow me to get access to more screws. And we're just gonna kinda keep working our way in. There's really no science to this. It's just undoing all the parts that we're putting together. And it's tough to get to the previous bolts and screws. So it takes a little bit of time, but it's a work in progress. All right, so once all the paddles are off, that allows you to get to the decorative cover. Usually it's either a twist like that, and this drops down, just follow it through, put that aside. All right, now that gives you access again. This is the motor here. Um, this particular one has nuts and bolts right here on both sides. I'm just gonna get my wrench, undo that, and that should lower the whole thing, and we should be good. That'll give us access to the Junction box. All right, so I got my 716 wrench. I'm just gonna loosen these up by hand. 
after you do it a couple of times, you should be able to use your fingers and uh, finish it off. All right, once the four bolts are loosened up, this is holding up the whole assembly. Just kind of wiggle it out and fish it through. All right, so you got the whole motor housing dropped. Now you got some wires. If I didn't tell you before, which I know I did, make sure the power's off. And if you don't know if the power's off, get yourself an electricity reader. Press the power button. Wee! Green is ground, it should be nothing. Your black wire, nothing. Your white wires, nothing. Guess what? We don't have any power. If there were power, this thing would be beeping red lights. Beep, 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 beep. But obviously, we're good. Just verify that before you start touching wires. I know some of you are not good with electricity. I don't want you falling off the step ladder and trying to sue me because I didn't tell you about electricity. You know what I'm talking about. Come on, people. Ceiling fans are gonna have your three wires coming out, the older style, right? You got your green, which is generally always the ground. All right, so just unscrew that cap, and it's gonna drop a little bit. All right, your black is the hot. Without giving you a whole electricity lesson, this is what actually carries the power from the basement breaker, wherever your breaker panel is, to the uh, fixture itself. So we're gonna unscrew the black. And the white is the neutral, which carries any residual electricity, if you will, back to the breaker panel. I'm not an electrician. I don't play one on TV. I just know how to do a lot of things. If you want electrical advice, talk to an electrician. All right, so those are all unhooked. Everything's unhooked. That's what we're left with, the mounting plate. Two screws right there will get this plate right off and then will be ready for business. There's always two bolts going up into the junction box. All right, so save these bolts, you might need them. Put them right on top of your step ladder so you don't lose those. Okay. And this slides down like this. And there we have our box. All right, so just check the box. Make sure it's solid. This is actually screwed into a floor joist I can see from here um I did another one in my house a while back they had one drywall screw into the side of a joist I'm surprised I didn't kill myself so I had to redo that that was a whole project but anyways this box is solid it's good all right and my three wires are exposed ground hot neutral all right let's install the new one all right so here's a typical mounting bracket it's got your two holes a built-in ground and this hook is going to actually hold the motor mount assembly of the new fan while you connect the wires they've been doing this recently and i love it because it's always been a pain to try to hold the motor mount while kind of connecting the wires so feed your wires through and then you want to line up these two holes with the two holes in the junction box oh come on Well, these two holes are a little wider than these two holes. So I've got two options. Go to the store, get a new better junction box, drill, all that other crap. No. Uh, my other option, I'm just going to take a drill bit, I guess, and kind of make this hole a little bit over, you know what I mean, to close up that gap. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. You see? You see what happens? Everything becomes a project. The smallest of things always become a project. There's a little hole. You can see the mounting brackets there. And that will suffice. That'll get me the holes that I need. Don't worry about drilling through this mounting plate. You're going to have the fan, the motor. You're never going to see that. All right? So I'm going to line up this one first since that has to be perfect. Screw that one in first. And then I'll screw in this one after. Line this up. There's the hole. I told you don't throw away those other two mounting bolts, right? I wasn't lying. Right. 
mounting bracket, very important. This has to be super tight. If it's a little bit loose, your fan's gonna waver and time it can fall off, fall on grandma's head while she's walking by. I mean, come on. So this has to be perfect, all right? All right, so we got our wires exposed and here's the actual, whoa, almost fell off the damn ladder. Here's the actual ceiling motor, okay? Um, it's got a little hole right here that we're gonna hook into this hook right here. These are fantastic. I'm so glad somebody invented that. All right, so this is the ceiling fan. We've got our white and our black. This is the house, white and black. And then this ground is gonna connect to this ground. And that's it. I've got these little blue wire connectors. I'm gonna use that. We've got electrical tape. And always have the old wire strippers in case you need them. And a good pair. Don't buy the cheap ones. Make sure they're all sharp. All the points are sharp and it's a good quality pair, all right? So again, make sure the electricity's off for the, I don't know, fifth time now. All right. Doesn't really matter how you start because the power's off. But try to make sure your connections are kind of clean. So line up the wires. When you do this, so they're not all intertangled, you know what I'm trying to say? So I just put them together. A little quick twist, nothing crazy. Take your blue connector. And you twist until it gets pretty tight. You don't want to keep going because you're going to snap it. All right, the white one's done. Same thing with the black one. Give the wire a twist, a braid, if you will. Line up with the other black one. Give them a little twist together. And take your wire connector and turn it. All right, again, once it feels pretty tight, you are good. All right, and what's the last one? The ground. Gonna connect the mounting plate ground to the ground from the house. Same thing, twist, make a little braid there. It's not a braid, braid's like crisscross, right? What am I talking about? Just twist, all right? Get your connector, put a little bend in this so they kind of, like I said, you want to look clean. So I usually kind of put a bend in my wires. All right, line them up with a little twist. Get your connector and the same thing. All right, now you don't have to use electrical tape. It's just something I always did. Um, I feel it kind of helps keep the connections kind of tight together. Obviously electrical tape isn't as sticky as like duct tape or something, but it's electrical tape and it's not a conductor, which is important. All right, now you want to use your electrical tape. Pull out about four inches. I know you guys know exactly what four inches looks like. I don't. Now you want to start your wrap on the wire itself, all right, pretty close to the nut. So I usually wrap it twice, making my way up towards the nut itself, and then I come around, grab the nut, start pulling on it, bring it back down towards the wires themselves. Nice and taut. And then you just kind of squeeze everything together. All right, and do that for all three wires and you're good. All right, so you got your wires mounted, looking so fresh and so clean, kind of getting a little bend so it cleans it all up, right? And as you lift this up, it'll fit in there nicely. So, now these, this particular bracket has two holes and two like ones you can slide it up into. Um, as you can see, there's four screws on the actual housing unit here. So I'm going to remove two screws completely. And then you just want to loosen up the other two. Like I said, these are like little slide holes, if you will. So the screws can slide up, you turn it, and then it holds it in place. So just loosen up the opposing other two screws. It's hot today. Just screw them out about halfway. Take it off the hook. Line it up. Slide in one, slide in the other, and then just turn. Now kind of put your paw on it just in case you lose balance. 
And now you want to permanently screw in these two screws. I got a bad angle here. I'm trying to let you guys see what I'm doing. All right, so All right now we're going to install the actual paddles. Um, this is actually kind of nice. They slide into these little grooves and then I'm going to screw them onto the plate underneath. Very simple. Obviously some paddles come in two different colors or themes or whatever. So make sure what you want to see looking up is what you want to see. So we're just going to slide this bad boy in there, line it up with the holes like that. They give you a little bracket as well. And then I'm going to screw those in with three screws. Repeat that three times and we're golden. All right, this is the light mounting bracket. Same deal. We're going to unscrew two screws, slide them in and unscrew the third screw completely. All right, so take this one out. Don't lose it. And unscrew the other two about halfway. Again, slide that through the hole. Bada boom, hold it in place. Tighten up these bad boys first. Now we got the actual light kit. This is an LED light, so there's no bulbs in these smart ceiling fans now. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm not sure how long these are gonna last, but I bought it from actually a ceiling light and light fixture store. So they said these last forever. If not, you go over there, you can always order another one. This one I think is a 40 watt bulb. So we'll see how it goes, right? All right, so very easily, we've got a plastic connector right there and another plastic connector on the end of the light. Line those up. And you hear the click. Good. Same thing on this. There's two screws and a third one. So we're gonna now unscrew the same thing. You ever feel like you're getting too old for this stuff? Yeah. So bend it, tuck it in there, and catch those screws. Give it a little turn. Lock it in place. Okay. That's all, uh, that's all she wrote. Let's get the cap, and we're good. Got the light cover. Um, there's little indentions here to line up with the indentions in the cap there. Push it up. Turn it. Till it gets tight, give it one little uh, And that's all she wrote. Now let me show you how to hook up the switch. So that's the old light switch. This is the one that came with the ceiling fan. It's got the light and then different speeds for the fan. This is only a three wire cable, which is perfect for our application. Let me go over the wiring real quick. So traditionally, most houses are wired with 12-2. You've got your hot, neutral, and your ground, right? Now, if you want a ceiling fan with, let's say, two different switches, you wanted one switch for the light with a dimmer and a second switch for the fan with a speed, you would need like a 12-3 like this, which is actually four wires, all right? You got two hots, black and red, your ground, and then your neutral. So one would power the actual light, one would power the actual motor to the fan blades, your neutral, and then the ground. So to avoid having to rewire this, they make these new smart ceiling fans now where you can utilize your old wiring system and this controls both the light and the speed of the fan. So that's another reason why I bought this ceiling fan. Less headaches and it's a pretty slick uh, control panel, don't you think? All right, so let's take this apart and we'll wire this in and we'll be good to go. All right, so I checked the wires. This is actually coming from the panel. This black one's going up to the ceiling fan, and then we have our ground, which is the bare wire, right? Now this switch actually has everything labeled nicely for you. This one is the ground. It says G. This one says, do not connect to neutral wire. This goes to the fan. And this says the power supply. All right, so I know this is gonna be coming off the breaker panel. This goes to my fan, and then your ground is your ground. Very simple. Just like before, give them a little twisty on there, and then uh, get your cap. Twist your cap on nice, not too crazy. Once it gets tight, you're good. 
All right. The other one, this one goes to the fan. Same thing. Twist the wire. Line these up. And put the cap. And twist. Okay. And the last one's obviously at the ground. Got a ground electricity, baby. Give it a little twist and put the cap on. So everything's connected. I have the electrical tape on. Now the hardest part for me, I'm not even gonna lie, is trying to put all this stuff back in the box. It looks like there was, this was a junction in there. There's other wires coming from other places. So they utilize this for the junction point. So you gotta kind of bend these in a certain way and shove them back in there. And I don't know, this part always like drives me crazy, you know? So we get that bad boy in there, first one. Gotta twist it, and then you just kind of work the wires. All right, and try to spread out the caps so they're not all in the same place, because if not, then this won't slide back, and then you have all kinds of other problems. You don't want that. All right, so one of the things with these smart ceiling fans is if you have multiple of them. This is like a little radio transmitter, so it shoots from 40 to 60 feet away. So if you only have the one, then you're good. You should just be able to start it up and it'll work. But if you have two, three, or four, this might mess up with the other signals and turn those other fans on. So all I'm saying is you're gonna have to reprogram this. Now don't get nervous, it's super simple. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is go to your other fans that you don't want bothered with and turn them to the off position, just like that. So when you reprogram this particular fan, they won't get the new signal. All right, you take off this cap here and you have a bunch of switches in here. All right, so I don't know if you can see these well, but all you have to do is just change them a little bit, whatever code you want, you just put a couple of up. All right, I'm gonna go like that, maybe like this. So I changed that. That's gonna give a different signal now to this fan to know that this particular switch operates that particular fan. And obviously you don't want these to match up with any of your others. So whatever other you have the others programmed to, make sure this one is different. That's all you have to do. Put this little cap back on, then you're good. So now we're gonna go turn the power on in the basement to power this whole system. And then I'll show you what to do to get this to reprogram your ceiling fan. Super easy, give me a minute. All right, so now we're gonna reprogram this fan. Again, make sure this is switched off to all the other fans. Very important or else you're gonna reprogram everything. I'm gonna turn this to on. A little blue light, we have power. It says to hold this stop button for 10 seconds. The light will blink twice, which it just did, and we're good. We programmed the system, that simple. One of the best features of these smart settings fans is aside from this, you can also order an actual remote control which you can keep near your bedside. So after you're watching TV, doing your thing, you know what I'm saying? You can just press the button and turn it off, uh, increase the speed of the fan, whatever you need. And obviously it comes with different colored cover plates. Put that bad boy on there, put the two screws in, you're good to go.